Well, welcome to our discussion of different types of activation functions, and today we're going to look at binary cross entropy. So let's begin, and I'll give this to Mohammed. Mohammed, take us away here. Uh, sure. So basically, we have the same setup. We have the input, output. Uh, we have the activation function sigma, and we have a desired output. So the same basic setup. You have a B now. We didn't have B before. Yeah, now. actually, that's an easy extension. Now we also have a bias. This term, which will be added by Wx. And we have the same uh, minimum error, square error. Uh, yes. Uh, see how it works if we use uh, mean square error to minimize this, uh, uh, the distance from this desired output with the model output. Yeah, and sigma is our standard sigmoid function that we've looked at earlier. So let's run this gradient example and see what happens to the cost as we do gradient descent. Holy smoke! Look at that output, desired to zero, and it goes 0 0.09. Well, that's pretty good. What would you like to do next? Uh, I think here we were lucky since we were already uh, near the desired, uh, desired values for the weights and bias. Let's see if we start a bit further from the desired. So we're going to go far away yeah. from the moon somewhere. <laughs> so we are going to change this B start and W start. Okay, let's do that. And boy, we're pretty far away. We're at two and two. Exactly. So let's see what happens. Mm. It doesn't look good. Wow, after 300 iterations, we're nowhere as near we, as we were before. And it seems like where you start is important. Yeah, that's so, important. And this is with basically one neuron, and we have 50 million. This is a problem. So we better figure something out to fix it. Yeah, let's see what's the reason for this problem. Yeah, why, why, why is it going so slow there? I'm going That's to go on to the yeah. next let's slide. Let's see why there is like a flat line here before going down. Okay, let's go and see why. And uh, basically we are using gradient descent, so we should look at the gradients. Right. Yeah? And if we take the gradient of C with respect to W here, this is the function. That's the result. So we have the sigma prime, we didn't have it before. And um, sigma prime, so sigma is a function that has basically two asymptotes, mm -hmm. right? So when we're stuck on the asymptotes, the red curve, I guess, must be the derivative curve. Uh, correct. So basically, this is the sigmoid function. The, red, the blue one is the sigmoid. The red one is the derivative of sigmoid. And as we can see here, the dc, with respect to the partial of c, with respect to w, is dependent on the sigma prime of z. So if we start at a location which is far away from the, from the real answer, uh, we, we would get like a small gradients. So there is no training. So there's no feeling about where to go, basically, because sigma prime is almost zero. Exactly. So, so yeah. since you're on a flat surface. We don't know where to go. So this is, this is a problem where we had a bad starting value and we didn't get enough gradient to push us in the right place. So we either try to find a way to get a better starting value or maybe we need to change the activation function in some way. Mm -hmm. And I think let's try that one now. So basically we should find a way to get rid of this sigma prime. This is the problem. We don't want to have this prime here. So basically the activation function. So let's see what's next. Yes. So what if we use this function? Wow, of so complicated. Maybe not that complicated. But look where I understand squared <laughs> error. We, we use that for fitting lines. But this one has logs. Why is the desired output? And A is the activation, which depends on 
z, which depends on our parameters. We have at least three chain rules to do. Thank goodness for automatic differentiation, because I'd never want to do this for 50 million parameters. <laughs> so take us through this. Where, what's going on here? Yeah, let's get more feeling about that. For example, first notice that this a is the output of sigma. So it always be between 0 and 1, and not exactly 0 and 1. It's yeah. always between 0 and 1. Right. That's one point. And we want to make this a, uh, which is our prediction, close to the grand truth, close to the desired output. Right. That's our goal. So see if, for example, y is 0. What happens? Okay. If y is 0, this part cancels out. Because log is, is log of a or log of 1 minus a, in this case log of a is bounded. So if y is 0, y log a, gone. 0, exactly. Good. So we would be left with this part. Okay. y is 0, this part would be 1. Yep. So in order to minimize this uh, loss function, we should minimize ln 1 minus a. So a should be 0, 2. Oh, okay. A so should be close to 0. So y equals 0, a will be close to 0. How about the other side? Uh, the other side is also easy. If uh, y is 1, this part cancels out. So if y is 1, y minus, 1 minus y is 0, so that part goes away. And y is 1, and then log a, if a is 1, then, or near 1, then that's near 0, so 1 times 0, 0, and the cost function is minimized. Is minimized, exactly. Okay, good. So shall we try it? Let's see what happens. Oh, by the way, that's sort of like uh, an analysis of numbers, right? But later on, we'll try to understand where this yeah. formula actually comes yeah. from. So basically, in future videos, we will come, we will talk about the origin of this function. But for now, let's just see it as is here. And let's see it working. Okay. Yeah. So what we care about, we care about the gradients. And let's take the gradient of this function and see what happens. And that's an exercise less left for students. It's just straight, uh, simple chain rule to get the gradients, and you can see the results. And those are the results that we're going to use in our gradient descent. So when we use those formulas, Let's see what happens. Just uh, yeah. So basically, if we do that, if we take the gradient, it should be easy to follow. And here's the magic. There is no sigma prime of z here. Right. There's no sigma prime in the final gradient formula at the bottom of the stack of calculations. Good. So it looks like we fixed the problem, but the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So let's eat the pudding in the next slide. And there's our uh, model, and I'm going to run it and see what happens. So basically the same setup, same values, and if you are close to the desired, uh, like the goal of the, 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 the good B and Ws, uh, the cost would go down. Yep. And it was the same for MSC. The thing is, though, when for MSC, the final output was 0 0.09, yeah. so slightly better. Okay, but, so now that's when we're close. Yeah. Now we're going to go and put b and w equal 2 before. And we remember that the cost function was very flat and it took a lot of iterations and the final answer wasn't that great. So we change these values, these values to like uh, make them further from the real answer. Make them, make them further? Okay, I'm going to run it. Holy smokes, look at that. Yeah, it seems... 0 0.05, almost the same. And I think also we ran it 300 iterations. So, wow. So this is a kind of cost function we want to use in which, which situation? Because it sounds like it's a binary situation. So it's going to be used for a classification Binary classification. Mm -hmm. Exactly, that's right. So, till far, the problem with the initialization is, is somehow solved. We have a better curve, curve fitting here. We have a better uh, uh, cost minimization here. With uh, this formula, binary cross-entropy. 
But if we have lots of classes to classify, we'll have to modify this in some way. Which we will see in future videos. Okay. Well, that's a great job. And I guess now, because of the way things are, we don't shake hands anymore, we touch <laughs> elbows.